Good morning. This weekend we are in Sofia, Bulgaria. And apparently temperatures are going to hit 37 degrees so I'm trying to get through my filming as much as possible this morning. But what's so special about Bulgaria? Well Bulgaria is the country that developed the Cyrillic alphabet in the 9th century and it's being used today, that Cyrillic script, in countries such as Serbia and mighty Russia. Anyway, enough about Cyrillic, let's check out the city. little history of Bulgaria. Bulgaria joined NATO in 2004 and eventually joined the European Union in 2007 but before that they had a famous communist dictator called Todo Zhikov and he would have worked in this party house over here. The Soviet party house. As I know Cyrillic I understand the Norodno and I would take the other word is Sobrania, so I take it as the nation's gathering. And as you can see at the top, the hammer and sickle has been removed. any Eastern European country or Balkan country you're always gonna find something Russian and in Bulgaria here there's no exception there's a Russian church over here and its design is based on a 16th century Moscovy church and was built for the Russian community here in Bulgaria and just behind in that park there's in fact a statue of the famous Russian poet Alexander Pushkin but it's just his head so it's not really interesting to show on camp well I was starting to enjoy this trip to Sofia Bulgaria until I came to one of the main squares which has just got construction work around the Tsar the Liberator look at that I mean, they could have finished that before summer. It's July now. That's awful. But the guy on the horse here is Tsar Alexander II. And he liberated Bulgaria from the Ottoman rule during the Russo-Turkish War, 1877-78. And there's that annoying construction work. Sophia you have a lot of churches and cathedrals and I'm really excited to visit this fourth century church later but for now we're right next to probably the largest cathedral in Bulgaria Alexander Nevsky and over here we've got the Vechni Agon and the lion on the left Sarovo Oh, he doesn't want to tip to me, never mind. Vechni <laughs> Agon. So, not far from the Vechni Agon, which means internal flame, 
you have a Soviet monument in a park, but no internal flame. Whereas usually that's the opposite in Russia. You usually have like some impressive Soviet statue with the flame, which is to remember those who fought in wars. But this is the one that they have in Bulgaria. So here it is, the church St. George Rotunda, built originally in the fourth century. It has Roman baths around it, but here it is. Wow. It's amazing how they've kept it in that condition. Let's go and have a look further down. still got these Roman pigments around on these ruins so it's beautiful no visit to Sofia is complete unless you visit the Museum of Socialist Art and here we are, greeting us with the Red Star. And this is impressive. Look at all of these uh, Soviet statues. Wow. We'll start off with the, uh, the main man from Bulgaria, who was Todo Zhukov. But they don't have a big statue of him, unfortunately, it's a small one. But here they've got plenty of Lenin statues. Exciting. Here he is. The big man himself. Todo Zhivkov. But what we're looking for is Lenin. <laughs> Sure, you can find probably about five or six of Lenin statues here. Nice. The first one here, we've got Lenin's head, but this reminds me when I was in Ulyanudi, which is kind of a similar statue. which in fact is the biggest uh, head of Lenin in the world in Ulyanudi. Ah, here we go. There's another Lenin statue. Happy days. <laughs> this time sitting on some kind of throne. Wow. This is impressive. If you're a big fan like me, you'll enjoy it here. I was asked actually, in fact, by my former colleague, every Russian city where I go to, to take a picture of myself and Lenin, which I, in fact I did. So I'm planning maybe to put a video together with all the photos of me and the Lenin statues. But this is the biggest one in the whole of this uh, area of Lenin. That is nice. Wow. Now it's time to uh, head to the most famous street in Sofia called Vitosha and it's the longest I think but I didn't want to stand out from the crowd looking like a tourist so I had to get this shirt <laughs> as I'm one of those people who doesn't like standing out from the crowd you know to go on that street I thought the best thing to do is to look like a native and feel like a native That church over there, I don't know if you noticed, there's some wedding going on. Let's see if we can uh, get a better view from that. 
it's nice. Just one of like thousands of churches here. <laughs> right, let's go. So we're now on Vitosha Street, which is apparently 2.7 kilometers long. And why is it called Vitosha? Because you can see at the back here, the mountains. You can see right at the end of the street. That is a beautiful view. And on the other side of the street, you've got the church where we saw that wedding right at the end. And this reminds me of just like a typical communist street. Not like you get the same in like Moscow with old Arbat and I have that feeling where if you remember that Bulgarian dissident who got killed in uh, London with an umbrella poison umbrella crossing Waterloo Bridge Georgi Markov I can imagine he would have walked down this famous street so I've just arrived at the airport terminal one which is Wizz Air I arrived in terminal two and it was a brand new airport with the metro it's perfect but this is a smaller terminal and here it is <laughs> I kind of got confused with the taxi guy but when I said I'm flying Wizz Air he said oh it's terminal one so anyway I'm off back now to London so thank you for watching this video please subscribe and like below and see you all soon bye for now